It went from Dak Prescott to Andy Dalton and most recently Ben DiNucci, but the new starting quarterback for the Dallas Cowboys was always destined to get a shot at the mecca of Texas football. Meet Garrett Gilbert, the Texas high school legend who was supposed to win the Heisman when he got to college, but it didn't exactly pan out for him as he struggled with the Texas Longhorns and would eventually transfer to SMU. He was a big time player coming out of high school, but his career never went how it was supposed to. He will get a chance to be the starter for the Cowboys, and let's see how he does. Today we'll talk about the incredible story of Garrett Gilbert and how he got to this point. But first, be sure to subscribe if you love football, give the video a like to help it get in the algorithm, drop a comment and share it with your friends, and stay until the end so the video can get recommended to more people. And now let's get started and meet Garrett Gilbert. To understand his entire story, we need to go all the way back to the fertile football grounds of Texas. Gilbert made his first high school start during his sophomore year in the 2006 Texas Football Classic. He led his team to a 41-34 victory, and his performance caused Texas Gridiron sports writers to take notice, and one guy even said, he's the best high school quarterback I have ever seen. Gilbert would guide Lake Travis to the 2007 state championship game, and he broke the state records for completions, pass attempts, and yards in a season. Chad Morris was his high school coach in 2008, and he led Lake Travis to a perfect 16-0 record and a second straight state title. He finished the year with 4,851 passing yards and 55 touchdowns. Gilbert completed his high school career setting a state record of 12,534 passing yards, breaking the previous marks set by former Texas Tech quarterback Graham Harrell. Gilbert initially was indifferent to break the record when he had a chance, and he only did so after the coach insisted he should. He led his team to a 39-4 combined record as a starter from his sophomore to his senior year. He was a big-time recruit as expected, an Elite 11 finalist, an Army All-American, and was actually projected to win the Heisman at some point in college. So where the heck was this kid going to go? Gilbert verbally committed to play college football for the Texas Loghorns on February 7, 2008, the day after he received an offer in the mail from them. He always had aspirations to play for Texas since he was a kid. During his youth, he pretended to play football for the Longhorns, passing the football to himself in the living room and diving onto the couch to catch it. When he was eight, he had a chance to play catch with then-Texas quarterback Major Applewhite, who he considered to be his idol growing up. He was seen as the best quarterback since Dan Marino coming out of high school, and he was ready to tear it up for the Texas Longhorns in college. He was the backup as a true freshman to Colt McCoy, but he would get a shot on the biggest stage. He filled in for Colt McCoy when he got injured against Alabama, and he'd complete 15 of 40 passes for 186 yards and two touchdowns, but he did have four interceptions and a fumble. Analysts took the position saying his stat line didn't reflect how well he actually played, even though he was responsible for five turnovers. And he said that several of his passes should have been caught, and he did lead the Longhorns back to get a score of 24 to 21. However, the comeback did ultimately fall short, and Texas lost 37 to 21. After that season, he was the starting quarterback for Mac Brown in 2010, but it didn't go as expected as he led the Longhorns to a 5-7 record. This was Texas' first losing season since 1997, and against Kansas State, he threw for 5 interceptions. In that game, Kansas State only attempted 4 passes. After that bad year, Mac Brown announced that every job on the team was up for grabs, leading Gilbert to compete with sophomores Case McCoy, Connor Wood, and David Ash. On August 29, 2011, it was announced that Gilbert would retain the starting position in the season opener against Rice. However, just a couple weeks later, he was demoted to the second string quarterback behind McCoy and Ash. Gilbert ended up getting injured, and he underwent successful surgery on his shoulder, but he was ruled out for the remainder of the season. Seeing that his time at Texas wasn't probably going to work out for him, he decided to transfer to SMU under head coach June Jones. As the season progressed for him, Gilbert gained a lot of confidence with the Mustangs and completed four touchdown passes against Houston, a game which set the SMU record for points in the game. He his best game of the year the following week against Memphis, where he threw for 353 yards and one passing touchdown, with two more touchdowns on the ground. Overall, he finished the 2012 season with 2,932 passing yards, 15 touchdowns, and 15 interceptions. Not exactly great numbers, but it was alright. Gilbert would go on the pass for 3,528 yards and 21 touchdowns in 2013, and he missed two games due to an injury. He finished his college career with a total of 9,761 yards and 49 touchdowns and a lot of interceptions. Because of his immeasurables and just all the hype he had at one point, he was still expected to be a late NFL draft pick. And that's exactly what would happen. He was selected in the 6th round, 214th overall in the 2014 NFL draft by the St. Louis Rams. He was released during final cuts though, but he was signed to the practice squad. 
Later, he would get cut from the practice squad on there, and he would actually sign the New England Patriots to their practice squad. He did actually remain on the practice squad when the Patriots defeated the Seahawks in their 28-24 Super Bowl win, so he did get a ring. Just a few months later, the Patriots waived him. One day after being waived by the Patriots, he was claimed off the waivers by the Detroit Lions, but was literally released a few days later. In 2015, he was signed to the practice squad of the Oakland Raiders, but in the offseason, he was once again waived. He got back on the Raiders practice squad after Matt McGloin suffered an injury in the final game of the regular season, and he was actually going to serve as the backup in case McGloin was unable to play in the wild card round. Connor Cook would end up taking his spot as the backup for the playoff game, and Gilbert was once again released. I feel bad for this dude. The amount of times he got cut during his NFL career, most people just would have given up. But he trusted his skill, and he was going to make it. He ended up signing with the Carolina Panthers in 2017, but he was waived on the first week into the season and assigned to the practice squad. On October 16, 2017, he got his big break though as he was promoted to the active roster for the first time in his career. In 2018, he lost the backup quarterback job to Tyler Haneke, but he would be re-signed by the Panthers once again after Cam Newton and Heineke were both shut down for the season, and he served as the backup to Kyle Allen in the Panthers' last game of the year. He did end up making his NFL debut in relief of an injury to Kyle Allen, and he completed his first career pass to Ian Thomas for 31 yards. He finished the game at 40 passing yards, but on December 31st, on the last day of 2018, he was once again waived by the Panthers. At this point, he had just moved on from the NFL, and he was drafted by the Apollos in the Alliance of American Football. And he was actually doing really well there. By the time the league suspended operations after eight weeks, Gilbert had led the league in passing yards, passing attempts, completions, and passer rating. He's also second in passing touchdowns, second lowest in interceptions, lowest in interception percentage, and second highest in touchdown percentage amongst all starting quarterbacks. Following his breakout campaign in the Alliance of American Football, Gilbert signed with the Cleveland Browns in the NFL, and he'd actually make his debut in Week 5, relieving Baker Mayfield in the fourth quarter in a loss to the 49ers on Monday Night Football. On October 12, 2020, Gilbert was signed by the Dallas Cowboys off the Browns practice squad as a backup to Andy Dalton and Dak Prescott. This move relocated him back to the state of Texas. This was everything he had known his entire life. After Ben DiNucci did absolutely terrible last week, Gilbert got the call that probably changed his life. He has been named the starting quarterback for the Dallas Cowboys this week, and he will make his first career start in week nine against the Pittsburgh Steelers, and this is probably a dream come true for him. The odds are Gilbert probably won't do very well. He's not gonna be the future of the Dallas Cowboys, and he probably won't shock anybody. But for a guy who had so much hype, struggled in college, and has been cut so many times in the NFL, this is going to be a dream come true day for him, and I'm honestly so happy for him. I will be 100% honest and say I had literally never heard of Garrett Gilbert before today. But his story is pretty cool, and I am definitely rooting for him tomorrow, and I'm also going to tune into the game just to see how he does. He will be the starter tomorrow, and honestly, how do you guys think he will do? Be sure to let me know what you think of the video and let me know who I should do next or another guy who had a lot of hype who didn't pan out. I would love to hear your story and I'll consider all suggestions. If you enjoy his story, want him to succeed, or want the channel to grow, be sure to give the video a like before you go and check out all my other videos. If you love college football, be sure to subscribe to the channel, share this video with your friends, and check out all my videos on the end screen at the moment. I will hope to see you guys again soon, but until next time, peace and good luck tomorrow to Garrett Gilbert.